my YouTube buddies. I'm Jacob with another movie review and continuing on in my series of Alfred Hitchcock reviews. In today's video, I'll be reviewing the next two films of my director project, starting with 1940's Foreign Correspondent, and then I'll review 1941's Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Hope you enjoy the video. Foreign Correspondent Set during the beginnings of World War II, Johnny Jones, an American crime reporter dispatched by his New York publisher to put a fresh spin on the drowsy dispatches, has a nose for a good story. But in an attempt to learn more about a seemingly noble peace effort, Jones walks into the middle of an assassination, uncovers a spy ring, and falls in love. Foreign Correspondent was released in 1940, Alfred Hitchcock's second release of that year following Rebecca. Both movies were big hits when they came out in 1940. They cemented that Alfred Hitchcock was a director to pay attention to, especially in Hollywood, because both movies were critically acclaimed when they came out. Both were financially successful, and both were even nominated for Best Picture at the Oscars that year, with Rebecca being the one that won. If you want to check out my recent live collab with Black Tastic Media on that movie, uh, I'm sure it'll be in the iCard up above somewhere in this video. A Foreign Correspondent is a movie that's, I don't think near as discussed as Rebecca, but even Rebecca, I feel like, is underrated in today's standards as well. Both movies are part of the Criterion Collection, and if you're a big Criterion fan, they are both worth checking out if you're a big Hitchcock fan. Foreign Correspondent is, is, is especially interesting because of the context this movie was made in. The film was set, and the movie came out during the early days of World War II, when it was just a European affair, a European conflict, and America was still very neutral in World War II. The main premise of the movie involves the main character Jones, played by Joel McRae, who is dispatched from New York to London to get a good report on the war. He is the foreign correspondent, as the title suggests. I actually do really like the premise of the movie, and the premise alone is the reason why you should check out this movie, because the premise of the movie is so intriguing, it's so engaging, and once the story gets going, it's a pretty well-made spy thriller that's very smartly written. There's a lot of twists and turns along the way. And some very awesome set pieces from the master of suspense himself. There's two really good sequences that really stand out when watching this movie. One, uh, which takes place in a windmill after an extended car chase and assassination. And then there's a good final act on a plane which crashes into the ocean and there's a big survival finish at the end. I thought that was very well done as well. Uh, this movie has a really wonderful cast of characters and great actors that play these roles. Joel McRae is a pretty underrated actor. I've seen him in quite a few movies uh, besides Foreign Correspondent, this, he was also in the 1930 adaptation of The Most Dangerous Game and was really good in it. And he's been in some comedies directed by Preston Sturgis, an underrated director, most notably Sullivan's Travels. And I think every time I see him on screen, he tends to deliver and give standout performances. And being in an Alfred Hitchcock movie is no exception. The love interest that I brought up in the synopsis is played by an actress I'm not as familiar with, even though I've seen this movie twice now. I totally forgot about this actress. Her name is Lorraine Day, and she's the one who's paired with Joel McRae, and I, I thought she was fantastic. Like I, I really enjoyed her character. She was very intriguing. Uh, I love the conviction and passion that her character goes through in a quest to find peace in a very hostile world. And I love her passion and determination and the chemistry she and Joel McRae had was just fantastic. And there's a lot of uh, interesting layers with her character and the history she has with other characters uh, that lead to some compromising situations and it all leads to some really good drama throughout the course of the story. 
Uh, George Sanders is also in this movie. He previously was in Hitchcock's Rebecca as Rebecca's favorite cousin. A very awesome character actor. If you're a Disney fan like I am, you might recognize his voice. Uh, he was Sheer Khan in Disney's The Jungle Book. Uh, I really enjoyed him, I think even more so in Foreign Correspondent than in Rebecca. He's more, I think he has more of a charming personality in that movie compared to in Rebecca where you just kind of creeped out by his character. But So George Sanders was a lot of fun in this movie. One of the actors actually was Oscar nominated for Best Supporting Actor. Let me look this up real quick because, again, it's an actor I'm not as familiar with. Uh, his name is Albert Basserman, and he plays a diplomat that gets caught in uh, this crazy spy conspiracy ring uh, during World War II, and he was Oscar nominated for Best Supporting Actor, and I, I thought he gave a really good performance that uh, you do definitely feel bad for him because he's caught in this situation, and he definitely really sold the desperation of the, the, the spot that he is in uh, throughout the course of the movie. And another performance that I got to highlight in this film is Edmund Gwynn, who had previously worked with Alfred Hitchcock in some of his early British films, most notably The Skin Game and Waltzes from Vienna. And if you haven't seen any of those movies, you will know him best for playing Chris Kringle in the original Miracle on 34th Street. Edmund Gwynn has a small part in this movie. He pretty much has one noteworthy scene. But he plays a more villainous turn than what you might expect if you've only seen him in Miracle on 34th Street. And he has more of a Cockney accent compared to what I usually hear him sound. And I thought he was really good in his small scenes. And he had a very noteworthy, memorable presence even in the small screen time he was in. I do like the way this movie was shot. There I love the cinematography in this movie. It's very well put together. Again, very smartly written. Uh, the movie definitely keeps you in on the suspense uh, the crazier the story gets. I think if I had any negatives with the movie, it does feel like a movie that was made in 1940. Because the movie, I think, has a greater emotional impact for the audience that it was made for. Because this movie was made in the middle of World War II, and the movie ends literally as London is being raided by Germany. And the film actually came out like the week before that actually happened in real life. Hitchcock actually heard that London might be invaded in real life, and so he reshot the ending to reflect that and what was going on at the time. So the movie made such a big impact on audiences at the time because of it. However, I feel like in today's standards, like people watching it years after the fact, uh, when the whole conflict is all over, it doesn't have as big of an impact because the film is a relic of the past. However, I do love Joel McRae's monologue at the end of the movie. I'm sure if I was there in 1940, I would probably be moved to tears by it, honestly, because it was so good. And I, I, I still think the movie still has a lot to say, and I do like the, and, uh, I do like watching the movie, I guess, in a historical context. I don't know if it just has I don't know if it has the same impact that it had back in 1940. I think mean, now it's just an entertaining movie, whereas in 1940, an entertaining but very relevant movie for its time. I still really enjoy this movie. I would consider this a hidden gem for sure in Hitchcock's filmography because I don't hear people talking about this movie when discussing the works of Alfred Hitchcock and that's a shame as this is a really tight film, uh, very well paced, great performances. I love the set pieces and I enjoyed the storytelling of this movie. I think uh, it's only like real hiccup is I think the ending but even with the ending I can definitely see how it impacted audiences at the time, and it's still a really good movie overall. Uh, I wish the movie got more attention today because it's still a, a really entertaining movie with a great cast. I don't think it's as good as Hitchcock's other 1940 release, Rebecca. I got into that movie a lot more, especially on, in its cinematography 
and it's an overall atmosphere. But Hitchcock still made one banger of a spy thriller, and it definitely, I think, continued to help pave the way for great movies like North by Northwest going forward. So as for me, I'll be giving Foreign Correspondent a 4 out of 5 stars, and on the 100-point scale, it's getting an 80 out of 100. Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Happily married for three years, Anne and David Smith live in New York. One morning, Anne asks David if he had to do it all over again, would he marry her? To her shock, he answers, no. Later that day, they separately discover that due to a legal complication, they are not legally married. So, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, no, not that Mr. and Mrs. Smith, this Mr. and Mrs. Smith was released in 1941, and this was the only Alfred Hitchcock film that he made in Hollywood that was strictly a comedy. Now, contrary to popular belief, this was not Hitchcock's one and only comedy, as some people make it out to be, as Hitchcock did make some comedy films as he was in England. I previously reviewed films such as The Farmer's Wife and Rich and Strange, which were more comedy-centric movies that he did. They were not that good movies, in my opinion. The Farmer's Wife was watchable, but... Uh, Rich and Strange was definitely a misfire for sure. And I had only heard very little about this movie just by the name only and the fact that this is a movie called Mr. and Mrs. Smith that came out long before Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie starred in a completely different movie with a completely different premise with the same title, which is a lot of fun in its own right. So what are my thoughts on Mr. and Mrs. Smith? This was a first time watch for me. Well... Yeah, this one's a misfire. Hitchcock and silly comedy just don't do it for me. If you've seen my review of Rich and Strange, you know I didn't care for that movie because the comedy fell flat. And there's a couple of decent moments. Uh, I do like the premise of this movie for sure. Where you have this couple who they find out that due to a legal issue, they're not technically married. And... The two characters have their own reactions on how to do with that, and the characters decide, particularly Mrs. Smith, that they don't actually love each other, despite the despite Mr. Smith's interest in bringing her back. Uh, there's definitely this uh, complication in the story, uh, especially when earlier Mr. Smith's like, when he was asked if they would fall in love again, would he do the same relationship or just stay single and he's like no I'd stay single so there was an interesting dynamic at play with the characters our actors are played by Robert Montgomery and Carol Lombard and the chemistry is there I like the two actors especially Carol Lombard she's giving it her all I haven't seen her in any other movie than Mr. and Mrs. Smith but I thought she was the standout she is Carrying this entire movie on her back just through her excellent delivery, her comedic chops, and really selling the emotion of her character as well. She definitely had it all. And then come to find out this was the second to last movie released before her tragic death in 1942, which is very unfortunate. But from what I've seen her in this movie, I thought she was great. Come to find out, Alfred Hitchcock only signed on to direct Mr. and Mrs. Smith because he was such a fan of Carol Lombard and he wanted to direct a movie with her in it to prove to the world that Carol was more than just a comedic actress. She can handle serious, weighty material as well. I guess he wanted to put Carol Lombard in one of his suspense thrillers, maybe. I don't know. But something must have happened in the development stage. A lot of creative heads didn't see eye to eye. And we got Mr. and Mrs. Smith, because Hitchcock is not too fond of this movie. He dismissed it and called it a misstep, and you can definitely see why. Like I said, comedy isn't a strong suit. and Like I said, it has a good setup, but it's just not done well because of Hitchcock directing this movie. It just, it just doesn't feel right that Hitchcock is making a comedy over... A marriage falling apart and the comical shenanigans surrounding that. Like I said, I like the premise overall. Uh, the setup is actually pretty good. There's a couple of decent moments in there that made me chuckle. Like, I actually like the bit where the two decide to go back to the 
place they ate at where he proposed to her to try to rekindle something. And the place they go to is now run down and is nowhere as nice as what it used to be. I thought that was actually a quite funny gag that paid off very well. And there's a couple other occasional moments that, you know, I, again, I got to chuckle out of. There was a scene in a, a department store involving uh, the women's lingerie section uh, where Mrs. Smith is now working at post the relationship falling apart. And the shenanigans surrounding that was absolutely hysterical. Uh, so there's, there's some good moments in there. And again, I like the two leads. They both have good chemistry together. You can see there's a connection in their performances. Uh, I think the main reason why this movie fell apart is the more the story goes along, the more I really started to dislike them both as characters, especially the way they treat each other afterwards. And, uh, you know, even though especially Mr. Smith wants to bring the relationship back together, but the measures he's doing to get back definitely reeks in red flags. And Mrs. Smith don't want any part of that, even though she knows better. She knows that you know, these characters, you know, they, they had a great relationship before this bombshell over the uh, legal issue that they're technically not legally married. Uh, she wants no part of that and thinks the whole thing was a scandal and that there was no love to begin with. And she goes out of her way to absolutely trash Mr. Smith, which has kind of felt forced out of nowhere. I get she got offended by the what I, he would not redo it all over again if given the opportunity. But he still genuinely loved her. So I definitely saw flaws in both characters to where... I got annoyed with both of them, and by the end, they got so obnoxiously unlikable that I did not want them to get back together in the end, despite the movie desperately trying to tell you that they should be together the whole time. The movie did not do enough for me to say, yeah, that was a great couple. They need to be back together, be married again, and have an awesome life together. I did not get that in this movie, and that's the biggest issue this movie commits. Is uh, I could not stand Mr. and Mrs. Smith by the end of the movie. It became gradually unfunny and uninteresting as the movie went along. I think because of Hitchcock's direction, the movie doesn't really work either. Hitchcock, again, in comedy, doesn't really do well. I'm not saying Hitchcock can, can't be funny, because Hitchcock, at his best, even in his suspense thrillers and horror movies... He sneaks in some dark humor in his stuff. And the dark humor he puts in his best movies are hilarious. Like, watch Rear Window and Psycho if you want further proof of that. But yeah, when he's doing physical silly comedy between Mr. and Mrs. Smith and Rich and Strange, the comedy just does not work and it just comes off as flat, forced, and awkward. And Mr. and Mrs. Smith definitely is a misfire in Alfred Hitchcock's filmography. I don't recommend this movie unless you want to complete his filmography. If you're a Hitchcock completist, that's the only reasoning I would recommend you checking out this movie. But if you don't want to watch it, I definitely can see why. It's definitely a misfire on all accounts. Not the worst thing. Not the worst thing Hitchcock has done. Some of his early British films, I think, were far worse than Mr. and Mrs. Smith. But it's still not a good movie, and it's definitely one of the weaker entries for sure. So for me, I'll be giving Mr. and Mrs. Smith a 2 out of 5 stars, and on the 100-point scale, it's getting a 38 out of 100. So that wraps up my reviews of both Foreign Correspondent and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, this double bill video. Continuing on in my series of Alfred Hitchcock reviews, part of this director project. If you're a fan of Hitchcock as a director, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can check out my past Alfred Hitchcock videos. I've covered all of his British films, and I recently did a live stream collab with Black Tastic Media on his first Hollywood on Hitchcock's first Hollywood film, Rebecca. All of those reviews will be featured in the playlist, where you can check out the link in the description below. I got a lot more Hitchcock reviews coming your way. Join me in the next video in this series where I'll be diving into the next two films in Hitchcock's filmography, which are Suspicion and Saboteur. I've seen Suspicion, but I have not seen the latter. I'm excited to revisit Suspicion and check out the other film, Saboteur, for the first time. 
So be on the lookout for my reviews of both Hitchcock films coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen both Foreign Correspondent and Mr. and Mrs. Smith, let me know down in the comments below, would you follow these two films? Did you love them? Did you hate them? Were you mixed on them? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!